today I'm here with my friend Ingrid. Ingrid, what do you do? <laughs> so I am a Brisbane-based artist and illustrator um, and I do a lot of this sort of stuff. Um, so looking at a lot of native plants and animals. Um, I studied uh, fine art at QCA and graduated last year. Um, and strangely enough though, Virag and I met through a time of my life when I was doing a bit of community theatre. So I've always had a bit of a musical stream as well. So yeah, we did some theatre stuff together and that's how we crossed paths. What about you, Virag? <laughs> Well, I, um, I would hope some people listening know a little bit about me. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be awkward. <laughs> no. Um, um, there's a newcomer. <laughs> um, so I work as a multidisciplinary theatre maker, so to speak, into some fancy words. So I work as a director for various theatre companies uh, with, in Queensland and within Queensland doing my own work and other people's works as well. I also work as a teaching artist so I manage performing arts workshops and I teach drama at various, um, again, independent theatres as well as having my own private practice and I also write a lot so again with the works that I do I often um, do all three things, whereas I perform, I direct and I write, uh, but I try not to do that as much anymore because it can get quite, not really stressful, but I feel like it does take away a little bit from the experience when you're doing everything by yourself at once. Um, that's and there's probably other things I've forgotten. Um, <laughs> you're but, a multi multi talented <laughs> uh, But yeah, so I have invited Ingrid to be on this segment because she is such a wonderful little artist. I shouldn't use the word little because you're older than me, but, <laughs> but I am a lot shorter than you, so yes, I think that's, that's true. <laughs> What's um either one project or artwork that you've created in the past um that you think plays a significant role in not only like who you are as an artist or teaching yourself who you are as an artist, but also in mm. kind of launching your creative thinking and I guess your, your, your online platform for your art as well. Yeah, so um, I think a big one was last year I decided to make a 2020 calendar. I just decided after uni, it's really difficult, I think, to stay motivated if you don't have projects to look forward to or tasks because you're used to having assignments and stuff like that. Um, and I'd seen this really great app on Gardening Australia called Grow Native and it just encourages you, you to get to know the native plants in your area. So for us, that's southeast Queensland. Um, and so I went through each month, I chose three different flowers that you should be able to find in bloom during that month. Um, and so all together, it was 12 paintings with three different flowers and each one had a different animal as well. Um, mostly birds, because I love birds. <laughs> um, but it was a really great project for a lot of reasons. It forced me to learn a lot of new skills, like a few things in graphic design. Still wouldn't say I'm great at graphic design though, my goodness. Um, graphic design, timelines, uh, meeting deadlines, working at distribution, because in the end, we um, I sold 850 copies. So like, that's, a lot of copies to work out how to send and we did wholesale uh individual sale run a crowd fund for it so it was just a really good project for a lot of reasons because creatively i was challenged to create 12 different paintings um that were all a bit different a bit interesting for each month um i was challenged logistically uh, and it just forced me to do things that i just never thought i would do because i'm quite shy so doing a crowd funder I think I set the goal for like something really small, like I think it was because about two hundred dollars, and then we we went like way over that goal, and that was really really cool. <laughs> yeah, so that was a really good project um, that taught me a lot. And now this painting that I'm working on currently is going to be for next year's calendar, so twenty twenty one. 
if we make it through this crazy time, which I'm sure we will. What about you? <laughs> Me. Here's an unfair question. Do you have a project that was pivotal to your creativity? <laughs> Almost like we planned it. We've <laughs> not planned at all. <laughs> well, the responses aren't. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> Can you tell? Um, yes, it's so weird yeah. painting and walking. Sorry, it's to so quickly. Great. I just, I just love watching you. I love watching Ingrid paint, and that's not meant to sound really stalkerish. But actually, some of my favorite days is when often we haven't done it really at all this year because of everything that's going on but some of my favorite days is when I go over to Ingrid's and she's painting and I love writing and so she's there painting whatever she's working on at the moment and then I'm like writing stuff in my journal on my computer and it's just a, it's just really really lovely so I miss that yeah <laughs> I, yeah I really enjoy it when people come over and like you can just sort of create together it's a really lovely experience oh, so yeah so lovely. anyway <laughs> Back on to you, Jack. <laughs> um, so I'm, this was really hard for me because I am one of those people where I don't do something, I never do something for the sake of doing it in terms of whatever that may be, um, especially in terms of creative works and creative projects. Like even as I, even when I was younger, I would only audition for a show if I love the story. Or, mm. you know, like if I thought it would challenge me, um, I never mm. do things for the sake of doing things. And so in that sense, every single creative project I feel that I've done has left, has definitely left an imprint on me creatively. Um, so I really struggled with this. So I actually decided to choose two. It's so true though. Like I remember in Alice, you were just so... I could tell you you really had thought like thought about it and it was a really important part of who you are and yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I loved working on Alice. It's not the show I'm gonna talk about, but I did love working on Alice because I am very much an Alice and I think a really big part of you, Ingrid, is an Alice as well. And I think we're very much we're very creative souls, lost in our imagination and loving to play mm. and to explore and so that story resonated with me in a very beautiful spiritual level but in terms of my I guess my creative lens and my my tool belt as a theatre maker the first show I want to talk about is 12 Dancing Princesses which I did Aww. and this is my very battered script I always bind all of my scripts because I'm one of those people um the reason why, nice. yeah see the, <laughs> the reason why that show is is one of my I guess my one of my most significant works that I've done or been involved with is because that's the first time I've ever directed something um mm. and that was a really big thing by having John Boyce who's the artistic director of Brisbane Arts go hey here's a show for you I really want you to do this um because I believe in you and I think you've got the creative vision for this and for me that was such a big thing because I'd never done this before like I'd done assistant directing up until that point um so 18 year old me was a little bit terrified but also very very excited so maybe I wasn't maybe I was 17 I can't anyway I was you were really young I was you young I can't remember yeah. uh, the years the years they, fled, they bled together <laughs> once you get past 20 years <laughs> Blends together, <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, and so for me that was such a wonderful experience because that's when I realised that I love directing and I love shape not just mm. creating worlds but shaping worlds, um, and not just performing mm. them but actually moulding them like shaping moulding them together, and I one of most my most let's start that again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of my most treasured memories is when. One of my good friends, Jaya, who also who was the choreographer for the show, and um, he's worked with me on quite a few things since then. Uh, he and I were sitting in the audience and we were watching one of their last tech rehearsals and we just looked at each other. We both had like tears streaming down our face and we were both smiling and <laughs> like we've just, and, and I said to him, I was like, we just, we just, we've just created this. Like, this is what we created on stage. I mean, yes, it was using someone else's script, but. I did such a good job too, because it was a very like, 
it's not that it was it, it was just a very um basically written show <laughs> that's so lovely of you to say that now i'm like lost for words um but yeah <laughs> so we looked at each had that moment of, of we created this and this is what we've done and that was such a wonderful moment and my heart felt so full and that's when it kind of went like I can do this and this is one of my new passions and I can say mm -hmm. even until today um, I haven't had many experiences in which I felt as full as I did in that moment so I don't think you actually saw this show but my one of my best friends Raf, Rafael Tafera, um, who was in my previous collaborative co-creative video him and I wrote this, this show called Mind Games, and it was an absurdist um, slash conceptual, however you want to describe it, work in which there were two characters called Bryce and Macy, and they were playing Connect Four in a prison cell. And each move triggered a new memory or a new sensation, which they talked about. However, it is a conceptual script, which means that not all lines and hardly any lines actually connect to each other so it's it was very poetically written in a sense and it was quite difficult to learn in terms of lines because the lines didn't connect to each other and if someone mm -hmm. got even one line it was very hard to get back into the motion right yeah so, like we had different strategies as in you know if someone forgot a line the other person said that line and kept going for the next five lines and then the other person joined in and whatnot um mm. but yeah and then we actually went on to tour that show in um the south southeast drama circuit and we were both 19 so we were the youngest in our adult category and mm. we won a ton of awards which was, we were very surprised, if I'm completely honest with you, we were totally surprised. We didn't expect anything. And I know a lot of people say that, um, but they're saying mm. down really humble, but genuinely we're not expecting anything. Um, and we well, got... It, sorry, just quickly interrupting. Like, it's, I think it's a common thing. You know how people always talk about having a big break? I don't think I've had a big break. But I there are little successes that. that you don't realise. Like, for example, with the calendar... I only got 300 copies printed for starters. I didn't expect, I expected to struggle to sell that many. And I think sometimes it's just like little things where you're like, oh, okay, I'll order 200 more. Oh, okay, I'll order 200 more. Or like in your case, like, oh, this has actually had a really big response. Like sometimes things just happen incrementally. Um, and then, and then it's like, when you look back on it, you're like, oh, I guess that was like a, a big thing but it didn't feel like it at the time it just felt like it happened naturally yeah it's crazy but um mm. yeah like raf won best supporting male actor we won third best show we won best original script or new script or whatever that category was called i can't remember i should have <laughs> the awards behind me um <laughs> i won and i won best actor in a female role and the guy who won best male actor was a 50 55 year old gentleman so mm -hmm. it's quite a significant um age difference but it really um and actually i think the judge just thought i was a lot younger <laughs> um when i went up to get the award uh <laughs> yeah so that was quite a um a, a lovely and fulfilling moment and that's what and but not so much the awards but more so in the creating process of this show it was that I love like what I said before I'm a theatre maker and that's what kind of reminded me um, about that passion is that I love writing and I love performing and I love directing um, and I love mm. equally and I love doing them at once and though sometimes I try not to do them at once like it is so it is so fulfilling to be able to either act in a show that you wrote or to be able to direct a show that you wrote because you have mm -hmm. such, there's such a beautiful connection with you and the text. And I think, I mean, it's the same with, I think when you paint as well, it's really hard not to put a bit of yourself in everything you do. Cause I think we mm -hmm. can do that organically and naturally. And so whilst yeah. I like, I wouldn't say like, for example, in mind games, my character was nothing like me, but I wrote it. Mm -hmm. so it does have a, mm -hmm it does have my style and my part of me in it it's the same with 12 dancing princesses with the directing like mm. um no it wasn't 
my script. It wasn't my mm. thing, but I found ways to put myself in through the directions and the and the actions and the reactions between characters, which I think is also as fulfilling. So I'm just a very, very fulfilled being. Uh, <laughs> but, um, You're just a fulfilled gal. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, but let's move on to let's move on to another another funky uh, question. Uh, so, yeah. I, as a as a theatre maker who has quite a few platforms during this pandemic that we're currently living in, which is awful, and I think it's strange for us to process what's happening mm-hmm. in our everyday lives. And I can't imagine mm-hmm. how bizarre it is for for children to to comprehend. Mm-hmm. What's going on. But it's unfortunately affected our arts sector quite yeah. and drastically. And that's not mm. just when we talk about arts, for those watching, <laughs> when we talk about artists, we don't just mean um, people like your traditional artists, like painters um, and craftsmen or whatnot. We're talking about everyone in the arts sector, in the arts industry. So that goes for... So- from performing arts to yeah the people who keep running <laughs> the yeah. directors the cleaners of theaters <laughs> yeah so basically everyone that works in the arts so they don't necessarily have to be on stage or behind an easel or behind a canvas they can be behind mm. the as well and so what i've been trying to do is do my own little bit and keep everyone creative through this segment and also I've done um, and I am in the process of doing quite a lot of very very cheap online drama tutorials for kids that either have lost their creative space or that have worked with me before and I know they've got a really lovely passion for theatre and that they're very much in longing right now for that space again and so I've been doing that Mm -hmm. at two three days a week which has been very fulfilling and I've also I and I forgot to mention this earlier but I also work as a theatre critic and so I've got a I manage the Brisbane Broadway World platform which is a global worldwide platform for reviewing and shows and whatnot and so what I've been doing is two or three times a week I've been uploading interviews that I've had and taken with local artists and at the moment I've got um like backgrounds artistic director Catherine up there I've got different comedians that I've I've interviewed um I have performing arts teachers as well and I've got a stack lined up that I'm yet to yet to upload um which doesn't sound like much and sometimes I do have this moment where I'm like am I actually really doing something by writing these up but I think it's really important that we use whatever avenues we have to to be creative and to allow others to share their voices um, about the, not only their creative process, but about how all of this is affecting our creativity mm. like as a nation, if that makes sense. Um, because I, I can talk for hours about how I don't think the right thing to do at the moment is to, for example, cancel drama workshops and closed theatres. Like, I understand why we have to do it because of restrictions mm. and keeping ourselves um, safe and healthy. But for a child mm. that's growing up, for a lot of them, theatre is their safe space. I know, especially for me, and I don't know how, how you felt growing up with theatre as well, but I know for me, that's one of the reasons why I have such a, um, such a deep and profound passion and love for it is because in times when I needed it, theatre was always there for me. And it's quite strange for me at the moment that Brisbane Arts Theatre Theatre, where I, where I met Ingrid as well and where I work at mm-hmm. prominently, like I haven't been there in three, four weeks, which is crazy. And it's, it didn't really hit me until yesterday when I was thinking about this chat that we were going to have, that this is such a strange, like there's such a strange numbness in me. Yeah. Being able to go to those spaces that I normally go to. Um, how do, how do you feel in terms of how everything that's happening in the world right now with coronavirus has impacted your creativity and the things you do to to stay creative in your practice? I think it's interesting having two people in the arts uh, discuss this in, in who are in different areas of the arts because um, 
painting itself is already quite an isolated thing. Yeah. So the main thing for me that's changed is um, I've had things like events cancelled, markets cancelled. Um, luckily, I didn't have any ex exhibitions lined up until the end of the year, but who knows, they might be cancelled as well. Um, so, and, and then the other thing, yeah, the other thing that I wanted to discuss is is um, I think it's been interesting because I've seen sort of two sides, people either being like, use this time to be creative, find new things, you know, be productive. And then I've seen the other side of the thing where people are saying it's okay not to be productive right now. Like you can take a moment to, like this is a huge deal to, for us to take on emotionally. And I think it's, and you know, these people um, are saying like, we need a moment to, to, let that sink in and I think that I'm more on that side where I had two weeks where I just really struggled to be motivated and I'd see people like being like look at all the things I did in isolation today and I'd be like man I just wanted to cry <laughs> um but I think that I think that it's okay to be in either boat and and I don't think that you need to be feeling like you're the most productive person in the world but then I think if you are feeling like this is a productive time, I think that's also awesome. And I think as well, it's awesome seeing people like you, Virag, who have such a um, community-based role. Like you really, the, I think the difference is that I can create, still create stuff and share it through social media. Um, and it's not a huge difference. Whereas I, I think you're seeing your innovation in ways of still sharing um, theatre and community is really cool. Uh, and so, yeah, I think it's just about finding new ways to, to be able to connect with people. But also, if you are still in that brain sphere of like, it's all bad, it's, all, it's also okay. <laughs> like, I, I think either way, I, I've seen people responding both ways and I'm like, that's totally fine. You do you. Um, but what's been great is that this week, I feel like I've gotten my mojo back and I feel like I'm back with it. Um, and so I've just been ramping up that Etsy store <laughs> and working on things like the calendar um, for next year and just thinking of projects that I can do. And um, the other thing too is like, I, I've been two choirs and both of those obviously can't rehearse together because, you know, of community and everything. Um, but one of the choirs has start, started doing virtual um choir rehearsals through zoom and it's really cute because you get to see everyone's faces and it's a bit different because it's like you're not really singing together but it's so yeah. nice yeah I love so I think it's yeah it, it's just finding different avenues and I think for visual artists it's it's a, maybe a little bit easier I don't know it's hard to say if anything's easier or worse because everyone's in different situations but yeah, I think now that I've got my mojo back, I'm feeling more creative and excited, which is nice. Trying to stay positive. Put on clothes that aren't pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's also really difficult because building on that, this whole idea of being productive in isolation versus being told to look after yourself and not be productive or look after yourself mm -hmm. by not being productive. I think it's also really difficult because a lot of us, like I have, and I can say this on here, but I've lost a significant portion of my weekly income because of, of course, the yeah. classes that I teach and because of shows that, um, that like either I was in creative development on or that were on the horizon for me were cancelled. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Some quickly and some postponed. And so I think mm -hmm. it's also really hard as well because a lot of people don't have that option of essentially not doing anything. A lot of that's people true. Yeah. Do what, which is the really tricky thing as well. Like, um, like me with my my one on one drama classes. Like I love them, and I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm honestly doing it with the intention of creating a safe space for kids, but at the mm. same time, um that that price that I'm charging is something and it's not it's in no way supplementing the money that I lost but yeah. it is still a source of income so I think it's yeah I think it's really difficult 
as well to to let yourself not be productive but what i've found really interesting is that whilst i haven't stopped being productive i've let myself slow down yeah if, yeah if, and I think, if i, I think go, that's you go <laughs> it's um i think that's the difference with like what i mean by productive is like I think people expecting you to be superwoman, you know, yeah, straight away. So it's like you, you keep continuing on with sort of what you were doing, but like not, not having that expectation that everything's going to be sorted straight away. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah. And, and it's, it's so tough with, with like you were saying with income streams, when people have lost teaching income streams, all those things, it's, yeah, it's really trick, tr trucky. Trucky. It's really trucky. <laughs> I don't think many people know who will watch this, but I'm doing my, my master's in primary education at the moment. But thankfully, I'm yeah. doing it externally, and so I haven't been impacted by anything that's going on at the moment with unis. Yeah. But with that, like, I'm finding it very hard to focus on study because my mind mm -hmm. is spinning. Yeah. Uh, Maybe it, that's also it, isn't it? It's, it's also like you've got to have suddenly shift focus, and so some things seem to take a back seat I don't know if you found that but I've definitely found that with certain things like things that I was really excited about and was about to you know put a yeah. lot of time into suddenly they're not the most in your face sort of thing anymore I don't know hmm. yeah it's tough. but I, I I've really it's been really cool hearing the ways that you've been adapting and it's really inspiring as well because I'm like ah that's that's a really good way of doing it and keeping your community alive um because i think that a big part of theater is community and that's a big difference with i mean of course art has community as well but i'm very introverted so i'm okay <laughs> i was gonna say i'm perfectly okay with <laughs> it's gonna sound awful but i'm okay being by myself <laughs> oh my <God. laughs> I, but I also think uh, technology and software such as Zoom has such a big role to play a part of that. Like if I if yeah. I'm really lonely, you know, like I can call you or I can call yeah. friends and be like, "This, like, please talk to me." Like, you know, and it's yeah. with this software, like I can literally speak and collaborate with anyone on it about theater. Yeah which I've used it for but what I've loved using zoom for lately is doing some jam sessions with friends so getting my guitar or my ukulele and then getting one of the instruments they have and then just singing on zoom and I and that might sound really cliche um, and I am no singer so so, <laughs> so they're, they're poor they're poor ears <laughs> I don't really listen to like pop music a lot like what's trending like I wouldn't know what was trending um but I I do I will admit um I, actually, I wouldn't even call it a guilty pleasure but I do love James Corden as a human being and um <laughs> I, think he's, he, I think he's a very very talented man and if you haven't seen National Lives National Theatre's live stream that came out two days ago which is going to be free um, and be able to watch for free for a week until they take it down. Um, James Corden in that is exceptional. Um, but he did a, he's doing, and a lot of the talk show hosts at the moment um, are doing like stay at home talk shows. And he did, yeah. um, and Dua Lipa, who's a singer, um, did a, did a video for, a Zoom video for his segment in which she got, I think there was like maybe like 12 of them in there and they each had like the individual Zoom videos and there was like all of her band and her four backup singers had each individual Zoom videos and it was just really lovely to see and I think it's mm -hmm. you like that music or not but I think it was just really lovely and with all like the pub choir stuff as well of seeing everyone mm -hmm. in this isolated homes coming, coming together and you know and performing like mm -hmm that way and I think that was I think that was a really lovely kind of uh moment through and I was like oh like it's still possible for us to, to create and to be together and to create yeah. the sound together or whatever that may be and so that was that was a really shame, shameless plug for James Corden what's your favorite painting that you've ever worked on or artwork oh, okay 
I thought I was like, oh, that's going to be easier than choosing someone else. It's like another painting that someone else has painted. But now I'm like, no, actually, that's probably <laughs> harder. <laughs> um, probably. <laughs> Pink gum. I really enjoyed that one. It was like a gum painting for an exhibition in Gala, uh, Gala Gallery uh, or Silver Waddle. The, both paintings for that exhibition just came out so naturally and I really enjoyed painting them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a Can painting because I don't <laughs> or draw. <laughs> oh, actually, there was a painting I did a couple of years back, which was for um, a friend who had a friend who had had a stillborn baby. And that was really special to paint. I don't know if the actual painting was my favorite, but I think the meaning behind the painting I really, really liked. Yeah. Um, well, fun. I have to think of questions. Uh, what, <laughs> what's your favourite colour or colour palette to paint with? Favourite colour is purple, but favourite colour to paint with is blue. And I'll show you just like a few examples of my blue addiction. Oh, wow, I'm disappearing and reappearing. Got all of these <laughs> virtual back. Blue. <laughs> I love that one. I think <laughs> I love it. So beautiful. Blue. <laughs> I, I fangirl about Ingrid a lot, so <laughs> oh, it's so mutual. Thank you. Blue. <laughs> blue. <laughs> so yeah, I really like blue. What's your favorite color? I think I know. Red, right? Yep, my favorite color is red. It's very 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 basic or maybe not so basic but I just I just always love the color red um and if you if you know me personally and you know you go through all my Facebook profile pictures I'm wearing red in all of them like <laughs> um no I didn't oh I just I love that Bilby so much I just throughout this video I've just been lovingly staring into the eyes of Bilby it's surprisingly hard to um paint and talk at the same time like it I feel like it really uses your brain. <laughs> well, so we haven't planned this. <laughs> so that's why I to her. What's she going to throw at me now? Uh, what is the f your favourite song that you've ever sang, whether that be in choir or whether that be in a show that you've been in? Mm, that's a tough one because there's songs that I've sung in, in a choir where it's just so beautiful to sing. Um, like in Beryllie last year, we did a song called The Ether of Infinity. Love that song. That was beautiful. Um, just like anything in Beryllie is, is really nice. Um, but in terms of like solo singing, I really enjoy in my other choir, we, we've done um, something called the Mag and G and it's got this, this solo part and it's just really beautiful part to sing. Like it's written really well for voice. So I'd say those two. <laughs> choir girl <laughs> but choir is a bit like theater in that way isn't it yeah it's it's a yeah <laughs> oh next question um looping back to Alice in Wonderland because we always find a way to loop back to it if you weren't playing Alice mm -hmm. in production what character would you have liked to play the red queen Ooh. <laughs> what about you what, what would you have played if you're if you'd been in it well I was in it one day remember when I was caterpillar oh yeah yeah that was beautiful <laughs> <laughs> um uh, <laughs> I like I'm very much an Alice but I think mm -hmm. everyone would love to be a gender bent mad hatter I think Mad Hatter has a lot. Actually, I think anyone, like Dormouse, March Hare, Mad Hatter, Mad Hatter, Cheshire Cat, although originally Cheshire Cat isn't in that scene, but I put Cheshire Cat in the Madly Mad, mad Party scene because how can you have a Madly Mad Party without Cheshire Cat? It doesn't, it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. <laughs> but I think just anyone in that scene, I would love to be because I think mm. there's just such a wonderful ambience that comes from that scene even when you're reading that story in the book 
and it's just mm. so and so I think there's such a wonderful little sense of community there um, mm. yeah what about you do you have any rapid fire questions for me Ingrid before we turn this off <laughs> Oh, uh, I was gonna, you know, Monty Python, where they go, what is your name? What? But then we've already done favourite colours, so that ruined that idea. <laughs> What's your favourite kind of bird? Uh, I would have to say kookaburras, only because we have kookaburras nice. that we see from my house. And they're so nice. And they're really, really beautiful. And, um, and I think uh, we're all going to really appreciate the animals that are around us. Absolutely. Like, I know where both of us are living, we're very lucky in the sense that we're not in a super crowded city area. And and I feel very, very lucky that we have the option to still go outside and go for a walk. It's just really, yeah. Because it, it would be hard to not be able to have that time. Yeah. Yeah. Ingrid, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank you for going on this Zoom COVID creativity adventure with me today. I, you know this, but I really cherish our friendship and I cherish everything you do in your own creative practice. And I will continue to fangle over every artwork you post on your Instagram story for years to come. <laughs> uh, uh, for those that, and as, as I said earlier, I will be posting all the links to all of Ingrid's socials in the comments below. But for those that already follow Ingrid, know that she has the most stunning Instagram stories of her chickens. They're incredible. Um, I once had the honour of holding one of these chickens and it's a memory you. that I, I've never forgotten. Thank you, thank you so much for, for spending... I don't know how many minutes we've been together, probably about an hour of your time with me today and for continuing to encourage creativity in our, in our time of needs and for being your beautiful self. <sighs> well, <laughs> right. 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 Thanks so much for having me. It's nice to, to talk about these things and like, to hear other people's perspectives on on how things are going and just checking in with people it's really i don't know it it really helps i think to keep keep us all afloat absolutely and thanks for joining me while i painted this will be every second sunday i upload a painting uh that shows the process of making it so you can check that that will come out this sunday yeah i'll be there <laughs> thank you so much for greg and everyone, you, sh you should just look at all the things that Virag does because she's a very inspirational lady. She inspires me a lot and helps me to come out of my little introverted shell. <laughs> and put clothes on. <laughs> I was very close before. <laughs> this, dress, this dress has little snails on it, which I feel like suits my personality because sometimes I wish I had a little shell that I could like curl and stuff. Me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll not be cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, as Ingrid said, for watching. And we'll see you back at, well, oh, I'll see you at 9 p.m. on Wednesday the following week. <laughs>